By definition, a buffer is a device or some type of material that reduces shock or damage due to contact. Well, that's what a buffer does in chemistry. What it does, it is there to resist a drastic change in pH. It is a weak conjugate acid base pair, we've been covering those, and what it does, it resists changes in pH when people add, and let me emphasize, small amounts of acid or base. There are many different kinds. We will restrict ourselves to only strong acids and strong bases in chemistry 1220. But an analogy for you, human blood again has a pH between 7.35 and 7.45. When you go above or below that, your body goes into an emergency situation. Our blood acid buffer is based on the carbon dioxide that we exhale, and it is a carbonic acid bicarbonate buffer that is in play. Just to add, seawater is basic. It has a pH between 8.1 and 8.3, but it's kind of scary because the water on campus has a pH of about five. Why do I mention all this? Well, if you're ever gonna work in a lab, you most likely will have to either prepare or use specific buffers. Take time to learn this, especially if you're going into pharmacy, okay? So what is the concept of a buffer? If you draw your attention to the center of this, in an initial buffered solution, we have equal amounts of the weak acid and its conjugate base. If I add some strong base, it is going to react with the weak acid its concentration is going to go down and the concentration of the anion will go up. That's what the equation shows right over here. If, on the other hand, I add some H+, plus, that is going to react with the F- minus to produce more HF, you see it go up, and your amount of anion is going to go down due to the reaction. These are stoichiometric limiting reagent BCA reactions, and there is our corresponding equation. Do I expect everyone to grasp this on one listening? No, not really, but let it sink in as we go through this section. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more in depth. Why does a buffer resist the change in pH? Well, they have acidic species, H+, that can neutralize an OH-, and they also have basic species, the A-, that can neutralize the H+. What I have written here are the two equations. If I have acid, my added acid, it reacts with the base component of the buffer and it regenerates the weak acid. If I am going to be adding some base, and this is a strong acid in our class and a strong base, it will react with the weak acid component and it will regenerate the anion, all right? Notice the single arrow. This is 100% reaction. This is a BCA table. So what are you gonna do? Well, when you're looking at these, the H plus and the pH, they really are determined by the equilibrium constant. And I'm gonna show on the next slide how you look at the ratio of HA to A minus. If you're employing a buffer in a lab, you want to choose one that has a pKa close to the pH you desire to maintain. You also have to think about something else called buffer capacity. Is there enough to neutralize whatever you're doing before the pH starts to change to an appreciable degree? So the greater the molarity of the buffer, the greater that number, the greater the capacity of it to resist change in pH. So that's the concept, we'll draw a line. Now there are three ways to calculate the pH of buffered solutions. You have acid hydrolysis, you have ion hydrolysis, or you have this new equation I'm going to introduce called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. It is so easy to use, and each of these give exactly the same result. So before, well, before we do a calculation, what you're gonna do is build on the calculations that you had before in 17.1. We did all of this math. We did all of these calculations. It took a while. What I'd like to share with you is a quicker way to do this, and that is using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. That's what we have right here. We can directly con ca calculate the pH we know our Ka, that is in a table, and based on our BCA table, 
we have values for A minus and HA. Now, I know there's going to be some of you that insist on doing it the old way. I'm not going to fight with you. But uh, when I was a student, this was one of the questions we had on our midterm exam. Derive the henderson hasselbeck equation. You begin with the Ka expression for a weak acid as well as the Ka equilibrium expression. What you do is you take the K equilibrium and you rearrange it. And then what you do is you take the log. And then when you have the log, what you say is, hey, log of H plus is pH. Uh, log of Ka is pKa. So what you're able to do is substitute them in. Here we have our pH. Here we have our pKa. And this just kind of comes along for the ride. You can play games with the signs. Notice a negative, negative, positive. But it's so much easier to have a positive, positive, negative, a negative. So what we do rather than have a negative here is we flip these two items. Will you have to derive it? Absolutely not. But if you're a scientist, this is what we like to do. That's why we're attracted to science. We like to do this sort of thing. Now, we could just take this equation and give you an example that was simply a plug it and chug it. But I found it's much more useful to make you think. And this is the example I'm going to use. It says, what amount of my salt, which is really the acid component, do I have to add to 0.1 molar ammonia, which is my base, to get a buffer with a pH equal to 9? And we'll assume that adding the solid doesn't change the volume of the solution. We can find this in a table. Well, let me take you through the thought process. Of course, I'm, um, I, I'm just like nerdy. I have to write that first equation, 100%. There is my second equation, and what this is, this is an expression for a Ka of NH4+. So what I need to do is use my Kw for water and my Kb for ammonia, and I come up with the value of the Ka for NH4+. So I guess what I should have written here is I should have written pH is pKa plus the log of the base divided by the acid. I'll let you think about this because, again, thinking is so important in this class. I'm looking for a pH of 9. I've got my Ka, 5.5 times 10 to the minus 10. And I have my volume, I have my amount of my base. And what I'm trying to do is find my amount for my acid. Yes, I can hear you screaming, I do not want to do this. But if you force yourself to do things a little bit further than the expectation, you will find things are going to go much smoother on an exam. So here's what I do is I crank out the math. And again, that is an important part of being a scientist. You can't say, I only want concepts. You've got to be able to take it all the way. As I put all my math pieces in there, I come up with a, well, this expression where we have 0.1 over NH4 plus is equal to 0.559. That tells us that our NH4 plus is a 0.18 molar. And we have one liter of solution we're trying to prepare. So in the long run, it is 0.18 moles. So are you going to have to always do questions like this? I can't tell you what will really happen. This is a typical midterm question. So rather than just do a substitution question, I thought, let's take you a little bit further. So again, these are going to take time. I would say most of these sections take at least two days to grasp. One, to look at it and say, I'm not quite sure what's going on. The second, things will start to fall into place. And by the third time, you should be able to replicate it or teach it to someone.